So I want to tell you all a story here about some friends uh, years ago in the 90s. Friends of mine, they went on a sailboat and they thought, well, this will be fun. Uh, you got to have seven people. You had the two guys already, I guess, that owned the boat. And they said, we can do it. You know, we can man this boat. We learned everything about it. And so they went out and they, they set out on a voyage. And when they went on this voyage, they did not know what was going to happen to them. And it's kind of like life. We're not sure what's going to happen next. So as they're out there on this voyage, one of them, I remember telling me the story later. And these are friends that I, I grew up with. And he said, yeah, man, I remember I woke up and I put my feet on the floor and it was water on the floor. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what's going on here? Is this boat sinking? And the boat eventually, as they all got up and went out on deck, the boat was sinking and they weren't sure what to do. Uh, they ended up abandoning the ship and five of them got onto a raft. Even one of my friends, uh, he later became a Marine for some time. He actually, the life raft was connected to the boat and he cut it with a knife and he stood on the boat and somehow was able to jump and make it onto the life raft. So he was even risking his own life. And they're out there out to sea. And they said there were swells of waves. And so there were other guys, there were seven of them, that didn't make it onto the life raft. Now, those five that were on the raft, they did get rescued pretty, pretty quickly, within a couple hours. I mean, that's still some time. But they, had, they all had their life jackets on, all seven, but those five were rescued. The other two, they were actually out there just floating in the open sea. And one of the guys I remember telling me, he said, you know, he wasn't really in a good place with God and he was struggling. And he said that he kind of finally came to a place where he started really just kind of looking over his life and saying, you know, what have I been doing with my life? And, you know, have I made time for God? And he said when he said, finally called out to God and he started praying, next thing you know, he heard the sound of a chopper. And it was a Coast Guard. And he was out there for about five hours, I believe, that day. And he was saved and he was rescued. And they went on to go on different talk shows and I think even Oprah and um, spread the word about what they had went through. But it really made me think about we need somebody to rescue us, someone to save us. And even as we're looking here in this world, we're living on this earth. This earth is a mess. It's in a bigger mess than it's ever been. We can't figure out why we're going through this pandemic, all the social unrest, all the struggles that we're facing, people that are being hurt and discriminated, and people have lost their jobs. People are depressed. They're saying that depression has gone through the roof with people's lives and they have struggled with it. And we all just feel like this is a crazy time and need somebody to rescue us. So this message, I want to encourage you with is that there is somebody that can rescue there is salvation and i don't want it to just be another message that you look at and you see and you say okay what's he gonna gonna tell us here but the gospel is powerful you have to experience god for yourself so you have to think about for yourself what is your hope in where, where are you putting your trust who are you hoping and trusting in in your life are you looking at if I can just get this job, if things would just work out in this relationship, you know, if I can just get to a better place with my health, you know, all of these things. But really, the world has been broken down is in chaos and a lot of people are worrying and people really need help. And if you look back in the Bible in this time, there was a 400 year period where it was a time of silence and people were wondering what God was doing. Now, it didn't mean that they weren't spreading the love of God throughout the community, but there was a time before Jesus' birth that people were in this place. And the Jewish people were on Ro under Roman rule. So they were in a place of uncertainty. And even they felt like in their own lives, maybe not in a spiritual sense, and maybe so, of oppression in their lives. So I just want to take you back and talk about the Christmas story about Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Mary was just a young lady, young teenage girl, and God was calling her to, to take on a big responsibility. And, you know, God will change our lives in the blink of an eye. And he did that 
with Mary's life when the angel of the Lord came before her and said, you're going to be with child and this child is going to be of the Holy Spirit. And you know that Mary was blown away by it. But then Joseph finds out she was pregnant, was going to divorce her quietly. And then the angel of the Lord spoke to him in a dream. And he said, this is of God. This is of the Holy Spirit that Mary is pregnant. And so Jesus is being carried by Mary and Joseph. They travel and they go to register and to their hometown. And when they do that, Jesus, they get to a place in Bethlehem. And they are in the manger. Jesus is born. And eight days later, I want to take you here. They end up in the temple. This is in Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through 32. So stick with me. If you have a Bible, cool. If you have a Bible app, that's good. If not, just listen close to what God's saying. And this is the living, active Word of God. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Consolation is like the comfort of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and he blessed God and he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Simeon saw the consolation of Israel as in the consolation, the comforter, Jesus the Messiah, he had come. And when you've seen Jesus, you've seen God's salvation. Simeon was a man that loved God. And it says that the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it says even when he went in to the synagogue, he went into the temple, that the Holy Spirit was on him and that he, he walked in with the Spirit of Christ. And when the parents brought Jesus, they were even amazed by what he had said so he was like the first person that came and spoke over jesus's life and saying look what you have done lord this is beautiful this is amazing like god confirms what he's doing in another place you want to look and say well what's the consolation of israel you're saying it's comfort well isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 through 5 says comfort comfort my people says your god speak tenderly to jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse 3, a voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God is a God that pays attention to detail. He knows everything about you and everything about me. And I just agree with what Jason Gray was saying earlier and Carissa and Thomas just sharing the gospel through worship. It's, it's important to know that all that we're going through, we can make it through if we have our faith in God, if we trust in God. Me, I was caught up in a place like that. And if you're in a place where you feel like you've just been caught up and you really haven't been focusing on the consolation of God, like the comfort of God, Jesus and Messiah, you talk about him, you go to church, you check everything off on the list, but you're not really in that place where you have a sincere, intimate relationship with Christ. You're not really walking as a disciple of Christ. Is that God wants to make you his disciple today. Jesus, when he had the disciples, Jesus, I mean, he grew in wisdom and stature after this point. When he had his disciples, those guys came from a small little place called Bethsaida, Fishington, Fishing Village. And these guys were becoming disciples, also known as Talmud. And these guys... Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, those guys 
were all from this place, they weren't someone that were scholars. They weren't very intellectual, powerful men. You know, you went miles down the road and there was a place where there was people of power and prestige. But God wants to call people that have a heart for him. So if you're here today and you're not sure where to turn, turn to the Lord Jesus. I want to just share with you John 3, 16. Some of y'all know Christ, but do you really, really walk with Christ? Are we truly disciples of Christ? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son for you and for me, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So when this world has gotten crazy, and the pandemic has hit, social unrest, all the things that are happening with jobs, finances, where have we turned? Who are we looking to? Are we looking to the hills where our help comes from, from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth? Are we looking at life and we're stressing and we're getting caught up in it? During the pandemic, I've had some moments. It's been hard, but we've got to continue to keep our eyes on the Lord. If you're here and someone invited you and you don't know Christ, you got to know that it's because of him that we have salvation. When he came to this earth through a supernatural birth, it was all because of love. He did that for you and for me, and that we all are born into a state of sin. It says in the Bible that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is straight up death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So today, come to know Christ for who he really is. If you're suffering, if you're going through depression, anxiety, I've been down that road. God is with you. He has you here for a reason. You might say, this is the oddest thing. You know, how am I a part of this? Somebody invited me and I just kind of got into it and uh, you kind of stuck. But a lot of times that's what God does. He draws us. Nobody comes to the Father unless he draws them. So I just want to encourage you that if you do come to Christ, all you got to do is three things, the ABCs. It's really simple. It's very, I mean, elementary, really. It's ask, believe, and confess. So you just got to ask Christ into your heart and ask him to come in and change you and make you brand new. Believe that he died on a cross for you and he rose from the grave and confess your sins to him. You know, it doesn't have to be some perfect formal prayer, but just knowing that you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, he will change your life. Me, I was drugs, alcohol, depression, anxiety. Things were just a mess. And I said, Lord, if you save my life, I'll never get high, I'll never get drunk again, and I'll live for you for the rest of my life. And he totally changed my life, turned things upside down in a good way. And I can't believe how I'm in full-time ministry and what God has done. Never even thought I'd make it out of high school. I was in, I'll just say high school for a number of years, and it was a struggle. But when he came in, he turned it around. So I just want to share an encouraging spoken word to you, and then uh, you know, I'll pass the mic back to Adam. So this is a Christmas one that I've been doing for a number of years, but it's got the scripture in it. So here you go. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news, a great joy. Mary had a little boy in the town of David. Your life, he could save it because he's the Savior, and that's why he came, kid. See, he's Christ the Lord, so here's a sign to you. You'll find a baby, definitely not maybe. Wrapped in clothes, being held by a lady, it's his mother in a manger. Now it's all great. I pray this ministry will definitely mentally, spiritually, and physically show you that it's meant to be for you to be here tonight. I hope you feel the love. I hope you see the light of Jesus Christ. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. He's a Messiah who will grow up, die, and rise again. Glory to God in the highest. You can't deny this. You better try this. So peace on earth, this birth is special. Goodwill towards men, let God use you as a vessel. In these days you give him for Christ, start living. Here we join the journey. We know Christ is risen. God's cooking something up. We need to look up so we can hook up. As a body of believers, get the devil shook up. Pick the book up. Together we can sup and lift his name up. It ain't just about turning it out. Or seeing crowds of faces about living it out. So if tonight, now, you feel that tugging on your heart, come let Christ give you a new start. I promise your life will never be the same. 
we did this whole event so you could have healing from pain. So let God break away them chains, be free from sin, and come to his name, man. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this night. Thank you for your special love for each and every one of us. Thank you for Adam and the vision that you gave him. And I remember watching him saying, I'm going downtown, downtown Norfolk to City Park with breakfast burritos. And I thank you, Lord, for the vision that you gave him, Lord. And even as you gave the vision to Ashley Lambert at All Nations Church, Lord, over 15 years ago and said, Ashley, I want you to go out and serve this community around you in downtown Newport News, also known as The Bottom. And she took peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, her and her husband, who's a pastor here, Chad Lambert. And now this ministry flourishes with lots of love and serves so many. Thank you for Adam. Thank you for the ladies and these entrepreneurs that are out here spreading the love, spreading the gospel through their businesses, Lord, that they're able to get out and provide for their families, Lord. I love that you do that, Lord, that we are your hands and your feet. So, Lord, I pray blessings upon each person here tonight. I pray blessings upon Adam's ministry. Lord, on those people that are here and they feel low and they feel like quitting, help them remember we're not alone. As Carissa said earlier, it's a worldwide thing that's going on. But Jesus, you are omnipresent, Lord. You are sovereign. You still reign. It doesn't matter what it looks like, Lord. You are on the throne and you are going to bring us through this. So whoever is here tonight, I pray they will call upon the name of the Lord. As you said, if we do, we shall be saved. Bless the remainder of this night. Thank you, for Lord, for letting me be a part of it. And I just pray that, Lord, you would be the light and the hope of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.